Well, hello folks, this is Matthew, the Manuel Kerry, and yes, we're doing a podcast, and yes, this is about the most recent storm that we had, the yet Cyclone Gabriel that actually occurred from 5th of February 2023 and then dissipated on the 16th of February, so it lasted 11 days. So folks, it has been a horrific storm. The reason why I'm talking about that, because we know that, yeah, the mainstream media wants to say this is the worst storm ever. And yes, it is bad. I cannot deny that. It is a bad storm. They say, Gabriel is one of the worst storms to hit Aotearoa, New Zealand. In living history, the, the Met Service say, like Cyclone Bola in 1998, and yeah, Gizali, the core star. The Waihain disaster in 1968, which will be getting to that, and the unnamed cyclone of 1936. And yes, Bob, I'll be talking about the storms that I know about, but I'm not going to go through all of it because it is going to take a long time, folks. So I'm not going to go through all of it. And if I, if you want to check it out yourself, you can go to the yeah, yeah, the the M I W A <laughs> side though, yeah, the yeah New Zealand Historic River events. If you want to go and look at yourself, and yeah, and yes, of course, Cyclone Gabriel thousand left without power, and yes, where I was at, I had lost about power for almost 24 hours, but there has been areas in New Zealand had been hit much worse than probably they had probably gone the, yeah, they had lost power that has for yet yeah, for 24 hours or even more probably not if up to a week so folks if I'm wrong do correct me on that please and yet yeah, now let's go to yeah Cyclone Bola yeah yeah, Sogum, uh, yeah, Cyclone Bola. Yeah, occurred from, yeah, from February the 23rd, 1988, and dissipated on March the 4th. So, yeah, it lasted 11 days as well. You can see the track there as well. Yeah, although it had like tip here yeah, at the Cape Baranga though. That's like the path of the eye, so. And yes, the memories from the death stadium from the monster Cyclone Bola, and yes, yeah, yeah, and this is, yeah, and. When Cyclone Gabriel came, it was also like that, similar to Bowler. And of course, at man, all that rain, like it was like around, yeah, I think it was around about 900 millimeters in one area. Yeah, there is, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Bola caused serious damage to the North Island New Zealand where heavy rain peaked at 917 millimetres, 36.1 inches of rain in the Gisborne area, Danish total over 82 million. Dollars in New Zealand dollars. 
I'm not sure what that. Well, folks, not sure what that is now, <laughs> cause that must be in Korea, cause. Cause usually the US dollars is usually lower. Yeah, and of course, Ali Mayov suffered a heart attack and died during the peak of the storm, attempting to tie down the neighbor's empty water tank. Yeah, but let's just go through what had really, yeah. And there's a the bridge washed away. Yeah, terrible, and yeah. Fruit prickers and that, and yes, when Gabriel came, it is similar to that. Yeah, and there's house full, full, full yeah. And now let's go to one of the videos from Gabriel, uh, uh, Fowler. And yeah, and I'm not going to watch everything, I'm just going to watch that part from, yeah. In March 1988, Cyclone Bowler lasted three days, and the highest rainfall over that time was 917 millimetres. This was one of the worst storms recently experienced in either Gisborne or Hawke's Bay. Roads were washed away, rivers and streams flooded. Huge slips appeared on hillsides from north of Napier all the way to East Cape. In Wairoa, the river was so high and full of logs and debris that the main bridge connecting the two sides of the town was swept away. In Gisborne City, the Waimata and Tarohira rivers burst their banks. Wow. Homes and streets were flooded. At Wairanga Okuri, a new six kilometre wide lake was formed when a hill fell into a river and made a natural dam. Many houses were flooded right up to their roofs and the local hall was completely underwater. The mark on the power pole shows where the water reached. Wow, right there. That is very day gosh. Man, oh man. Wow. Yep, folks, that was a bad storm back then. 1988 from Cyclone Bola and yet Doug Bell was hit bad as well. Where, where people were without fresh water. So sit back and see what they got to say. I'm not going to watch everything of it because it is going to take more of my video. Storm is still causing widespread problems. In the town of Dargaville, 5,000 people are without normal water supplies for a third day. The state of emergency has been declared there and is expected to remain in force until at least the weekend. The trouble started when the Kaihu River, a tributary of the Northern Waira, burst its banks on Monday night. Yeah, it burst its bank. It destroyed an old railway bridge which carried Dagobo's water main from the Kaihu Cat. Yeah, the bridge that carries Dagobo's water main. It's been 24 kilometres north of the town. A temporary main could not cope, and when it blew up last night, civil defence declared a civil emergency. Yeah, and you, and you know what the solution was. Let's go, yeah. Drinking water has been collected from farm holding tanks and a dairy company for distribution around the city streets. The stock water holding dam has also been tapped and treated by soldiers using a mobile army treatment service. It's a while to get set up this morning, but now we're going pretty well. We're going two hours, we put out 58,000 litres in that time. Uh -huh. What's it really taste like? Well, chlorine I is. haven't tasted it myself actually, but... Um, Aren't you game? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're getting um, quite satisfactory levels by the time it gets to town. The Darkable sewerage system is still working. That's if the townsfolk can spare a bucket of water for the system. The alternative is to collect some from the murky Wairau River. Yeah, man, it was bad because they didn't have, like, clean water for like at least three days and that and and they had to like collect it and have it filtered out or something you've probably seen it in this video and I'll have a link down below for any for all the articles I go through so you can have your own conclusion and yes 
four years earlier, before Cyclone Bollet, there was also a storm that also occurred in Southland. I'm going to go through that, that now. And there was a bad storm there, and you're about to see that. First floods in memory struck Invercargill and parts of rural Southland on Friday 27th of January 1984. The disaster was foreshadowed by a National Weather Office report two days earlier. Heavy rain was likely for 24 to 48 hours, possibly over the whole South Island. The weather map for the next day, Thursday 26th of January, showed a cold front was stationary over Southland and not expected to move for 18 hours. Torrential rain fell during that Thursday, and by nightfall, all Southland rivers were in high flood. In the following days, an estimated 5,000 people were forced to leave their homes. Flooding caused evacuations at Tuatapari, Otautau, Thornbury, and Riverton, as well as in Vicargill. Flooding was extensive in Invercargill, especially in the northern suburbs of Grasmere and Waikiwi. A state of local civil defence emergency was declared at 0400 hours on Friday 27th of January and extended to cover the Southland region at 1000 hours the same day. The scenes that follow were compiled from television news coverage of the emergency. They raise a number of points for later discussion especially the question of replacing civil defence people in critical positions before they become too tired or overstressed. More than 500 people have been evacuated from their homes in the Invercargill area and hundreds more have been forced out of their homes in Otata and Tuatapari in western Southland. Preparations for the emergency started on Wednesday when heavy rain started falling. Civil defence staff were assembled last night. The state of emergency declared at 4 o'clock this morning. Drains and sewers couldn't cope with the deluge and water started running along city streets and into adjoining properties. Added to the problem, local streams burst their banks, putting parts of Invercargill under several metres of water. Late this morning, rain started to ease and it looked as if floodwaters would drop, but rivers continued to rise and the situation further deteriorated. There were more evacuations when the Otapuni stream, which flows through the centre of the city, flooded. Early this afternoon, the Waihopai River on the northern outskirts of the city breached its stop banks and families were evacuated from about 300 houses in Gladstone by trucks and helicopters. Water from the Waihopai also flooded an industrial area. Wow. Yep. <coughs> There was back in 1984, yeah, that storm was bad, and that wasn't cyclone related though. <laughs> and that was like Drew with that cold front or something that you probably seen earlier in this video. And man, yeah, you can probably seen, yeah, heard about banks being burst. the boats just similar what yeah, people were using their boats when Psycho and Gabriel had hurt here yeah. and let's just go any disaster invariably brings a community closer together people do get together in times of need they help their neighbor once again, these aspects of the flood have been highlighted. But what about the group of people behind the scenes who mastermind the safety and then the restoration of the community? Those who even suffer criticism from some quarters of the stricken population. The civil defence. Yeah, they have been getting a lot of criticism though. okay the army have been okay but some of the people at civil defense well when they go back a bit yeah, there we go 12 to a house and 
of course, it's doubling up on sewage, which is pushing it all back into their own homes and the places down the bottom here. Uh, I'm not angry now. I was very angry yesterday. They mucked us around something awful. We came up. They told us to go away. We came back. They told us we needed permits. We got permits. We came back. And then they told us they weren't letting us go down anyhow. You know, the, the police have been OK. The army have been OK. But some of the people at civil defence, you know, just don't know what they're doing. I'm not doubting the ones at the top do, but some of the ones running around. Helen and husband Peter waited anxiously all week to be allowed to return home to see what havoc the flood caused. Look at the here. One of the worst clean-up jobs is getting rid of rotten food. In most of the houses, the power's been off since last Friday. Yeah, power outage, and yes, that had occurred when, when Cyclone Gabriel had hit, and folks, man, that's why you had to find alternatives to storing your food long term, because man, when power goes out, the food that you have in the freezer is going to go off, and that's what's just been happening, they had to throw all that onto the truck. Local freezing workers have been helping residents clean out their freezers and take food away to be buried at the tip. Be buried at the tip, folks. What a waste. What a waste. Civil defence authorities have now lifted restrictions on people returning home, although in many cases their houses are still far from habitable. Late today, the authorities decided to keep the state of emergency in force in Invercargill and parts of rural Southland until everyone's housed properly again. also a bad storm yet yeah, there will be a lot of dead livestock when get yeah, yeah during the aftermath of Gabriel yeah cyclone Gabriel yeah similar to what has happened back then very similar and now we're going to go back to the worst storm that ever hit New Zealand and that caused the sinking of the Waihain the Waihain ferry boat here yeah, and that's during with the cyclone Gisbeau, yeah, Gis Ali, yeah, or Gis Ali, yeah, and yet yeah, which had claimed around, yet yeah, which had claimed around 53 lives. Man, absolute devastation, and that's with the storm. Gears early back around 1968, yeah, the sinking of the Wyheen, yeah, Ferry. And yeah, you can see the picture there, listening to Starboard, yeah. Man, was is devastating. <laughs> it was there, it is devastating for sure. And here you can see the track of the cyclone gazelle. You can see it goes straight through New Zealand. That is a very bad, that was absolute pilot. Like, could be the worst one that ever occurred in New Zealand because it goes because the eye went through. You can see, although it may have been downgraded to a, a tropical storm, but that was still pretty bad. Here you can see affected all of New Zealand, all of it, and you can probably go through the list. It just goes on and on. Yeah, but yeah, but they say it's fifty-one lives, but it actually says fifty-three. Yeah, but they say in start fifty-three, but in there it says fifty-one. I don't know what you're on about. Yeah, gosh. <laughs> yeah. 
It's Trico Sokun Gizeli. That is a one of the bad storms, man. And now we're going back to one of the Hawks, another Hawks Bay storm that occurred. The next bloody flooding, uh, the flooding over the disaster risk. And yet, still, uh, what that just occurred when Cyclone Gabriel came, the storm back in April 1938. Wow. History can repeat uh, not just twice or even three times. It and yet, Big Bully has seen flooding their state homes, loading and lives, livelihoods many times, spanning over 100 years or even longer. Yet, yet and this is from Gabrielle. The most recent storm and the storm back in April 1938. So, very horrendous storms, though, folks. Very horrendous. Yeah. The worst storms ever. If you want to go through all of it though, but I'm not going to go to it because it's going to take a long time for me to go through all of it. But if you want to go through it, you just go to, you just click the link down below. And now let's go to one, it, uh, a bad flood that occurred back in 1878. Yeah, I know there would be worse storms back Here we go, and yeah, 1878, September and October, and a heavy, yeah, there was a heavy flood in Southland, Otago, Canterbury, and in the West Coast, brought by Northern Wesley and rain causing snow melt, and the bad charter was the worst affected. And they say the Waikato and Lake Taupo also had floods, but I don't see it running there. And yet, I'm going to read the part. The public and private properties with many thousands of pounds were swept away, and many towns were inundated in the central and south Otago in the Great Charlie Flood of 1878, which must rank as one of the worst visitation of its kind in the history of New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah, a long severe winter had left unusual depths of snow in the weather, mountain, watershed, hard frost, snowfields were over 100 feet deep in place. That would be around 30 meters. That is pretty deep, folks. Yeah, then. Yeah, sp spring came and cold and sharp and most of calculated the frost held the snow fast. Then in September a warm northwesterly winds blew for several days following by 36 hours of continuous warm rain. Warm rain. Yet warm rain, which has caused the snow to melt. And yet, caused the snow to melt and that, folks. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it is going to take you a while though and it will be long. And <laughs> if you want to read it, I have a link down there below. Yet, that was the best one. And that was in 1878. Warm rain. <laughs> that was actually even several years before the invention of the internal combustion combustion engine. Yeah, 
internal combustion engine, that was like several years before that was actually even invented. So, before there was even cars in New Zealand, before, way before. Here, folks, here. 1878 and of course you can go to the river oh, but that goes here yeah. and you can go and search the river and you can go here yeah, through all of that though and yep yeah. Then he just formed the Quateras there and Yeah and of course the Yeah then they trying to say that oh in twenty twenty three climate needs to will get political and yet yeah, they're thinking about they say rivers bursting their banks, flash floods and more intense cyclones, how climate change is making floods more worse. Well, climate always changes. It always changes, folks. And yeah. And yes, since National passed the Zero COVID, uh, no, the Zero Carbon Act. Yeah, the Zero Carbon Act. Not the COVID, the Carbon. The Carbon Act. So. <laughs> So I'm um, just here, here at the Carbon Act. So folks, so yeah, now, now we're on the Ken Trail North End said, yet no surprise, mainstream media will use Auckland flood to promote the climate change bunker, and yes, they will continue that when future storms come, so they can. Use it to push their agenda. Yet it appears that the impact of weather warfare are uh, becoming increasingly devastating as the powers that be work aggressively towards achieving their agenda 2030 goals. Yep, that's what it's all about. Bring in the 15 minute cities, which I ain't going to talk about that in another video yes folks I ain't gonna go to the one on bed trip I'm gonna see what she's got to say and and we're gonna start from here and I'm not gonna go through it if you want to watch the whole thing what Claire Serena is saying I have a link down there below so you can watch the whole thing The Raw Society has been pushing the man-made global warming scam due to carbon dioxide and they made a statement that New Zealand is going to be affected by climate change and the impacts are set to increase in magnitude. Floods, droughts, storms and fires will become more frequent unless significant action is taken. Yet to push their 2030 gold. The Royal Society has obviously got a conflict of interest and they're involved in this brainwashing exercise. Yep, to indoctrinate our children. Yep. And the media's gonna be using that to try to get us scared to give up to get us to give up our rights. Against the people of New Zealand. Just as the schools are with their man-made climate change due to carbon dioxide lessons. Uh, we've got to get our 24... Yeah, and which I'll be covering more of that. And yeah, they say climate change education resource to be in school in 2020. And yet, there is fun stuff. A new tool for schools will help children to live with climate change and how they can make a difference. Yet yeah, indoctrinating children, just what Claire has said. Although this article has been written back in 12th of January 2020. Yes. 
can cause the climate change minister Jane Shaw and the education minister Chris Hickson, which is our, which he is our current prime minister today here in New Zealand, announced Sunday that text, videos, guidance for teachers will be available to all schools following a pilot program at the Christchurch South New Britain School in 2018. Wow, wow. And yep. And you know how that's going. <laughs> Although that was back, that was written back by, uh, uh, yet, I think it was the yet 17th of September 2019. And yep, psychologists warn parents and guardians about climate change, alarmism, though nothing as increasing mother of children who are being treated for eco anxiety and yet I'm about to show another video about the one the victims there from the climate indoctrination you see how that's going to be going and let's let's listen closely folks I'm not going to watch the whole thing but take a listen now folks, this is climate alarmist child abuse. This six-year-old kid has just watched an environmental documentary at his school. Yeah, and that's about the yeah. Uh, yeah, let's listen to that again. Climate alarmist child abuse. That's, mm -hmm. Now folks, this is climate alarmist child abuse. This six-year-old kid has just watched an environmental documentary at his school. Yeah, a six-year-old. And they were about to be, and of course, they had already started to probably do that in New Zealand, according to staff. Yeah. Gosh. Look at that, folks. And that's about to be taught in our schools. Uh, that has always been taught in our school. For crying out loud. Just what Claire has said. Yeah. She has been talking about just two days ago. Man, I'm glad I saw had hesitated to do this podcast. Or else I wouldn't be including this video into it. <laughs> Gosh, folks, yeah, and where you can be assured he was filled up with all sorts of propaganda, and his mother made it worse. <laughs> the planet is going to be wrecked. People are just being rude to it. <coughs> they throw trash on the ground. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like trash being thrown on the ground, but what they have done to this child is absolutely... I just don't know any words to it though, I just don't. Folks, I just don't know any words I've got to say. It is just, it is beyond cruel what they are teaching to our children. Folks... If you do have children, especially here in New Zealand, I suggest that you do not send them to school these days. Especially what they've been taught to our children this darn age. It is just so horrendous, folks. It's so horrendous. Yes. I know I have really raised my voice because what I am saying, folks. Because this is being taught to our children at school. And, and of course, what Claire just said, they hit the Royal Society and probably more, and of course, our government got along with it. James Shaw, Chris Hickson, Pushing all this on our children. I know I ain't going off in that tantrum. Because my reaction. People in this you have to wake up. 
you have to wake up, stop sending your children to school, and teachers stop teaching the children those things. Because it is doing more harm than good towards them. <sighs> well, folks, I think that's all I got to say, folks. And yes, the government will continue pushing the propaganda and using stores to push their agenda. And, and that's why I'm doing this video so you can see the truth, folks. So you can s open your eyes and I'm not asking you to take my word for it though, folks. And, well, folks, what can we do about it? Well, what just I said, if you do have children, do homeschool school your children. Start sending them to public school. Turn off the tele yet. Yeah, turn off the TV yet. Yeah. Stop watching those mainstream news and that though, because all they are doing is pumping out fear porn. Yet, yeah. yet yeah, fear porn to try and scare you to give out your rights and that. Stop watching them. And also, yet yeah, start talking to people. Yes, talk to people, share ideas. Cause the one thing they don't like is us getting together. They don't like it, folks. <laughs> That's what we gotta do. Get together, talk to each other, share ideas, and let's build great things. Yes. <laughs> let's build great things. And yet, growing a garden. Yes. Raising animals. Of course, they know they want us stopping, uh, want us to not to eat meat. They know it's healthy. They know it's good for us. That's why they don't want us eating it. It's not about getting us to be healthy. Because we know that healthy people are harder to control. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A healthy body and those with a healthy body and a healthy mind, they are harder to control. And then they say, oh, no, no, no. We can't have slaves to be healthy. We can't have them to have, have a healthy mind. Nah, of course, we'll, that will be difficult for them to control. <laughs> yeah. Because that's why they indoctrinate our children. And for those who con <laughs> continue to send their children to school, man, they also yet they're also part of the problem. The one thing is that you're either the part of the problem or you're either part of the solution. Because the one thing governments always want to do to to gain power is problem, reaction, and solution. Yes. First, they create the problem. Second, they get to to react through the media and that. Then they offer the solution. And their solution is that, to bring in the Agenda 2030, their 15-minute cities, which I ain't going to talk about it in, the f in another video. Yeah, I hope you got a lot out of this video, folks. Yes. And that's why I have links down below so you can come up with your own conclusion so you don't ever have to take my word for it though, folks. Well, folks, I'm going to have to really end it here, folks. I'll see you on talking about the 15-minute cities. Yeah, I'll be talking about it. And I'll see you then. And yes, this is Matthew, the Millennial Kiwi, sign off, over, and out.